there. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this episode, we are going to be doing some custom door handles on our Chevelle. On our first sheet metal episode, we got a special delivery. We got some GTR door handles as well as BMW latches. So I'm super pumped. We put these on the EV truck for our SEMA build, but these door handles are really cool. It gives a really nice flush look to your build and also has like that real exotic car look and they feel really good in your hand. I think these are actually aluminum. Kalel went ahead and already stripped out our door. So we have our old door handle off and the lock. We'll probably end up getting rid of the original factory lock mechanism. All of these divots and all this stuff for the old handle obviously aren't gonna work. Inside here, you can see this little push mechanism. That's what actually opens and closes the door. So what I'm gonna have to do is a couple things. First of all, gonna have to figure out a way to get the GTR door handle to mount to the door. And then second is to get the mechanisms to work. Now, this has like a pull style which turns into a push style back here. So as you can see, that little nub on the back kind of pushes into the door. So what I'm thinking about doing, instead of using this guy, I'm gonna come up with some sort of linkage that attaches to this end to be able to push straight into that guy. But the first thing I wanna do is obviously get the door handle mounted up. So we're gonna go ahead over to the plasma table and cut out a rectangular box with this oval shape on the inside. Pretty happy with the way that looks now. It's in there nice. I need a little bit more love, but for the most part, that's about where we want to be. So. Obviously, the contour of the door is going to be not flat. So we're gonna go ahead and open the door up. Pretty good amount of bend we're gonna have to put into it. And take us over the slip roller and just start messing with it or try to be a little bit more smart about it. So what I'll probably end up doing is we'll use our contour gauge we've used once before. So go ahead and just push it into the door like so. Now we have a perfect contour that we want to work with. And this is going to act as our gauge. When we go over to our slip roller, we know we got to bend it that much. A little much. That's about right. All right, so we got our contour. Matched up to our profile pretty good. I'm gonna go over the door and mark this guy out. I have to make sure that this thing lines up so the positioning of this plate is gonna be pretty crucial in order for it to work. So I'm thinking I have to go a little bit lower and further back, which means I'm gonna have to trim it back a little bit more in order to get this thing to line up. So I'm gonna have to take off this leading edge here, and then we're probably gonna go into the body line down here, as opposed to trying to make an, a break, another break on the bottom. Because it's always easier whenever you're going on leading brakes on body panels, a lot less warpage as opposed to an open area where it's nice and flat. So what I don't want to do is get into this lip, this rollover on the actual skin of the door skin because it's going to be a lot more difficult to weld way out here. So we want to get inside of the door jam into this just normal sheet metal. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this back and we're on this body seam here and here now. I think what I'm going to do is just so we have a good visual of the actual mechanisms we need to be dealing with, I'm probably going to cut this out first and then figure out how we're gonna make the two together. It's looking pretty nice. Got a little bit of a jog here. Gonna have to like hammer and dollar this out when I finally go to do the final weld. But I'm liking this. Everything's nice and matched up. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead and we're gonna start trimming up our actual handle. So like I said before, 
we don't need all this jazz. So I'm gonna cut this away. Actually, I think I'm probably gonna cut away all of this because I'm just gonna use this mounting point here and this mounting point here. So I want this thing to be as slim as possible. And then we're gonna have to get rid of this guy because we're gonna come off of this leading edge back here. Well, it looks like the door handle mechanism on the back side here hits the inner structure which goes inside of the actual door jam. I should have paid more attention to that. I was just so hyper focused on the mechanism lining up with this mechanism that I didn't notice that. So since that's the case, these handles normally will aim backwards. So when you grab the door handle, you pull it like this, pull the door open. So I could flip it back around to make that work and I just have to make some linkage to be able to work with this normal movement. Now, in order to do that, I'm gonna have to cut this structure away that's right here and be able to fit this inside. All right, so I'm running into some issues with the mechanism, so I'm just gonna get everything out of my way. I thought I could do this the easy way by getting some movement as far as like getting access to that guy, but everything's just running into itself. And I don't want the handle way up here where it's just gonna look weird. So we're just gonna get everything out of the way. Go ahead and get the handle tacked in place so that we know that it's there uh, as far as like where its final resting place is gonna be. And then we'll go ahead and try to figure out our linkage. And then we'll start final welding this panel in, give it a little blend. And then this door handle's done and we'll jump over the other side. All right, we got our handle in place. I like it. I lied. All right, as you can see, our handle is uh, gone. I ended up cutting it out because I didn't like the way it was fitting. And I didn't like the scab piece that I was gonna have to make on the side there. The more heat you're gonna put into a door or a panel, you know, if you're doing multiple welds and stuff like that, the more chances it's gonna warp and the more body filter you're gonna have to use. You know, the goal is to use as little body filler as possible. So I just whipped up a new one, same process as I did before. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to remark this out using one solid piece. Tape's always good if you use it as like a straight edge. It's a pretty good guide as far as like trying to transfer lines over and stuff like that. Something like that. It's gonna go from point to point. So I'm gonna go ahead and Use a straight edge, transfer all these lines over, cut them on the bandsaw, and then repeat the process, tacking it in. Then we'll start working on the inside. All right, so if we see this little yellow tab right there, you can see it's doing an upward motion, pulling up. When I was uh, studying our old latch mechanism here, originally it came from right here. There's a tab here, I pulled back. But I can see the actual mechanism that's opening is this guy right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this away, cut this bracket away, I'm gonna expose just this lever, or this linkage piece. What we'll do is we'll drill a hole in it, put a linkage from here up to that yellow guy right there and then it should pull up on it and open the door. All right, so we went ahead and used some stainless steel filler wire. I use that sometimes for mock-up on linkage, but as you can see, but I'm not lifting it up quite high enough. I think the angle's too severe. So this mechanism down here is what hooks up to the inner door handle. 
And if I weld a tab just off the straight edge of this, coming straight out, I'll be more in line with our lever up here. So we'll just have to run a linkage straight down. The only question I might have with that is the glass. I think before I even bother with that, I need to put the glass back in, because that could be another issue. Good thing we put the glass in because we do have some clearance issues. As you can see, the glass would not allow me to go on the other side. So I wanted to go down to that bracket down there where you see the linkage attached to. I can't do that and go around the glass. So what I'm going to probably end up doing is I'm going to weld a bracket that comes straight out and then gusset it against the top of this so it stops it from wanting to fold uh, this way because that's what's kind of binding it up. As you can see, like when I go to pull it, it's pulling, pulling it too drastically. So if I make an arm that comes over and then gusset it, it'll lift it evenly straight up. And then that should do it. That should you know, open and close the door, no problem. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the glass back out and I'm gonna measure from the surface of that, of that point where I'm gonna actually put my linkage to out to where the GTR um, mounting point is. And then we'll just make a, a piece that comes straight out, gusset it so it doesn't flop up and then throw it back in and see if that works. I think that's probably gonna do it, but there's only one way to find out. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now and pull it back out and then we'll bring it over the bench and start fabricating our new bracket. So here's our little cantilever arm. As you can see, we did a flat plate and then we braced it, but we're basically gonna tie it off at the end here. And then you'll, you'll see, it'll just open the door. So we're gonna try this out, see if it works. Well, it seems to be doing something. Whether that's enough, we'll see. Ooh, baby. Hey, Kalel, come here and test this door handle for me. Let's see if you get the seal of approval. Open the door handle. Ah. <laughs> Woo! What do you think about that? That's smooth. Open it up and close it with your right hand like Kyle's saying you have to do. Yeah, but see, the thing is, it's about how you do it, right? You walk up to your car, regardless of your, if you're right-handed or left-handed. Left hand on the door. Get in. You hold the door. And then you, and shut then you get in and you shut it with your left hand. All right, now you do it with your right because you said you're going to open and close your doors with your right hand. Right hand, man. I was just trying to shake it off to see how I normally open doors. Like, but what was your natural... He forgot, well, you never... he forgot since he got here this morning. Oh, wait, you did ride your yeah, motorcycle. Yeah, I rode my motorcycle. Yeah, Sorry. let me just get in it like I get on my motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like if I'm coming here... <laughs> nah, I would still... Especially like this, I'm looking at it. It's like I know I have to... Like, what do I use to press this? Thing? Your like, left thumb. Your thumb. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> no. I don't, wow. Like, I don't like, even. This is so uncomfortable. Like, my wrist doesn't bend like oh, this. Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, let me see how uncomfortable this is. <laughs> that, that hurts so bad. I think it's ergonomic. Yeah, this whole time we're arguing about it, I'm going backwards. This because feels, I feel like your thumb, natural. your thumb would naturally go on that little thing because this is for blind people, so they know exactly where the door handle is. Feels it's like how a GTR is. <laughs> Kalel Kal Kal just bursts all of her bubbles. <laughs> That's how it is in a GTR. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This is a GTR. <laughs> Here I am thinking, I'm so smart. <laughs> all right, back to work. All right, so before I was so rudely interrupted by the door handle brigade, I had to put the glass back in, make sure everything was good, and it clears. So we got plenty of room back there. And I also confirmed that it still functions. No problem with the glass in. All right, so we know it works. We know exactly the process we have to go through. Now we have to do it all over again. Jump over to the passenger side and start cutting that one up.
right, so this one works, but the issue is that the hinge pins, as you can see, the whole door is loose. So I haven't, we haven't gotten around to doing that yet, but it does open. Problem is the latch mechanism is catching. So just for giggles, I could probably lower that down. All right guys, that is a wrap on our GTR door handles. As you can see, the passenger side was pretty much the exact same process as the driver's side. Hope you guys enjoyed that time lapse. The driver's, the passenger side hinges, the pins inside the hinges, like I said before, they are sagging. So the door's got a little drop to it. So all I do is adjust that pin. And now we have good open and close motion. But what we're gonna do is we'll upgrade those pins probably because in these old classic cars, they always go bad which is kind of alarming because the passenger side's bad and the driver's side's good and the driver's side door is the one that sees all the use obviously because the driver's getting in and out of the car and the driver's side opens and closes like a dream so next up we have to do the frenching in of the front and rear bumpers we have some sheet metal to do on the front cowl finishing out the engine bay getting the hood up to snuff and we're also going to be doing flush mount glass like i said before front and rear still waiting for that to come in and we also have a surprise for you guys for the exterior of the car i'm not going to totally say it yet but it's going to change the look of this chevelle it's going to look like no other chevelle ever built so that's it for this episode head over to the store guys we have new hats in stock i don't look good when it's forward just backwards but we'll put a link in the description below salvagesavage.com support the content so we can continue making cool builds like this for you guys and we'll see you on the next one Kyle, I need beauty shots. Looks a little. I'm gonna be honest with you, that looks gross. I mean, yeah, it's leftovers. It's not supposed to look good. If it was good, it would have been eaten the night before. <laughs> <laughs> Smoother than the passenger door on the C10. <gasps> well, what do we do with comparisons like that? Oh though? man. <laughs> I'm just saying. You know. you know who did the handles on the C10, right? I'm just saying. He ain't here no more, kids. Ooh. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. That's snazzy, right? Yeah. That's the only one you get today. That's it.